que des candidats j'ai avance le candidat welcome to Saint Moses uh, forum yes today we are going to focus on African history section B 1945 to present and the topic we are going to focus is on African nationalism and we are going to examine all possible questions and answer on the African nationalism now before we start if you are in Yaoundé and you need where to attend extra classes or you need where to attend extra classes Right, St. Austin's uh, Revision Center, situated at Carrefour Jouvence, is, uh, is at your disposal. We do in extra classes. We teach students on how to answer GC questions. We them how to target GC questions. In fact, we all what we do there is questions and answer purely for form five and upper seat. And the classes as every Saturday and Sunday, both form five at Science Commission and Opposite at science and commercial. If you are interested to join St. Austin Revision Center situated at Kaofu Jouvence, for those who are Yaoundé, you can call 651 7455 14 or 672 391520 or 678 Good. Now, for the science students situated at Yaoundé, Right, we we'll need extra classes. We also do extra classes with science, especially opposite science, physics, math, chemistry, biology, ICT. Right, and all these subjects, excluding math, have we we do offer them with practical. We offer them with practical at a very very affordable price. If you are interested, you can join. You can call and get more information for the science student. Now we go. We have the topic African nationalism. First, what do you understand by the word African nationalism? African nationalism refers to the state of awareness or self-consciousness that developed amongst the Africans after the Second World War towards the economic. We talk about towards the economic. What are we talking about? Like seizure of native lands for the opening of agriculture or plantations, social that is the interference into native custom and tradition and political exploitation, introduction of introduction of colonial policies like assimilation in the rule of their territory by their colonial master that led to the desire to overthrow colonial rule and achieve independence. Now, I'll repeat again the definition of African nationalism. This refers to the spirit of awareness or self-consciousness that developed amongst the, the Africans after the Second World War towards the economic, social, and political exploitation of their territory by their colonial master that led to the desire to overthrow colonial rule and achieve independence. Consequently, the African challenged their colonial master as such African states began achieving independence in the 1950s. And in the 1960s, almost the whole of African territory had been liberated from European imperialism. Now, this is a brief introduction to the topic African nationalism. We are now moving to examine the factors that provoke the rise of this nationalism in Africa. Right, what were the factors that led to the self consciousness of the Africans about the evil of colonialism? That is where we are going to do now. Now, the factors that led to the rise of African nationalism are divided into two factors. Are divided into two factors the, you have internal factor and external factor. Internal factors were factors that are true. That Cross African nationalism is the factors that were found in Africa that provoke the Africans to be conscious of their of the evil of colonialism. What external factors were factors out of the African continent that influence the rise of nationalism. Now, starting with internal factors, African nationalism was greatly influenced by the economic, social, and political evil of European colonial rule. Economically, the colonial power imposed harsh and arbitrary taxes on the natives. Socially, colonial rule entailed the seizure of native land for the settlement of European surplus population, as well as the destruction of African culture and civilization. Colonial rule was also associated with political evil, such as the imposition of harsh colonial policy 
by the European powers on their African colonies like assimilation, indirect rule, protection, and paternalism. This and more only provoke widespread opposition to colonialism. The introduction of Western education in Africa led to the foundation of the birth of the elite class or educated Africans, who later studied in Europe and America and became the vanguards of the nationalist struggle. These educated Africans condemned colonial rule, established political parties and newspapers that helped to raise the level of national consciousness and above all, the amount of pressure for independence. Nationalists include Kwama Kuma of the Gold Coast, Azikiwi of Nigeria, Boni of Ivory Coast, and Ahmed Ben Bella of Algeria. Furthermore, the role of the press for news was also instrumental in the rise of African nationalism. African educated elite published newspapers and magazines which condemned colonialism, educated the masses on the evil of colonial rule, and above all, helped in the spread of anti colonial propaganda. Examples of such newspapers include the Accra Evening News, the Daily Mail, the Morning Telegraph of Kwama Kuma, and the West African Pilot of Azikiwi. Also, have the activities of Christian missions and missionaries also played an important role in the rise of African nationalism. They came to Africa principally for evangelization, they preached on the equality of all races before God, which inspired African nationalism. Also, the establishment of schools. Through the establishment of schools, the educated Africans who later championed the decolonization process. They equally condemn African traditions and customs, which only inspire the Africans to break away from European domination. Moreover, the rise and growth in towns and cities that urbanization in Africa was equally instrumental in the rise of African nationalism, in that first it led to royal exodus, which soon social problems such as overcrowding traffic congestion, and high crime wave. The African blames the colonial master for this and as such agitated demand for independence. The development and improvement in transport and communication in Africa also necessitated the rise of African nationalism. In the 1950s, there was little improvement in the means of transport and communication in Africa. This infrastructure promoted the growth of nationalism in that they made it possible for the nationalists to move to the rural areas and to other areas to spread the gospel of decolonization and anti-colonialism. In another dimension, the rise of nationalism was influenced by post-war inflation in Africa. As a result of this, the cost of living increased while the standard of living dropped drastically. The hardship that followed was blamed on the colonial master. This letter became the target of nationalist struggle. The formation of political party in Africa also played an important role in the rise of African nationalism. They acted as a forum where the colonial masses met and discussed matters of common interest. The political parties equally expressed the grievances of the people, mobilized the colonial masses against colonial rule, educated the masses on the evil of colonialism. Through rallies, they organized and, above all, mounted pressure for political and constitutional reform. Such parties include the NCNC, the UGCC, that is the United Gold Coast Convention, the CPP, the FLN, the Kanu and the RDE or the Ada. Or the Ada. You also have the liberation of Ethiopia in the Second World War in 1941 was seen as a sign of hope and inspiration. Many African states also fight for their independence, especially when the war came to an end. These were internal factors that provoked the 
rise of African nationalism. These were internal factors. Remember, these were factors that were found in Africa that provoked the people to uh, be conscious of the evil of colonialism. Now, we are moving to examine the second part of the factor, which are the external factors. External factors were factors out of Africa. Now, starting, the granting of independence or the liberation of the South Africa, Southeast Asian colonies by Britain and France was instrumental in the rise of African nationalism. These colonies include, included India, Pakistan, Sicilian, Burma, and Indochina. In 1947, for example, Britain granted independent India, which was gradually followed by other countries of Southeast Asia. This made the Africans to conclude that they could also successfully challenge colonial rule and achieve independence. You have the Atlantic Chapter of Declaration of August 1941 also inspired the Africans to request for independence. It was signed between the U.S. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt and the British Prime Minister Winston Churchill. The chapter emphasized on the equality of all races and the right of all people to self-determination. The rise of superpowers like USA and USSR only contributed to the rise of African nationalism. At the end of the Second World War, the USA and the USSR emerged as superpowers. They condemned colonial rule in all forms mounting pressure on the colonial powers to grant independence to the colonized people, and above all, forming support to the colonized people in their struggle for independence. This inspired the African nationalists. The creation of the United Nations Organization following the end of the Second World War was also influenced, influenced or also influenced the rise of African nationalism in that it checked proclaimed the right to self-determination, provided a forum for imperialist attack and equally mounted pressure on the colonial master to grant independence in their respective colonies. Meanwhile, the impact of the Afro-Asian Bandon Conference of 1955 was also instrumental in the rise of nationalism in Africa. The conference was held in Bandon, in Indonesia, to condemn colonialism in all its forms or manifest as evil and call on the colonized people to fight for their independence. The rise and growth of an Africanism equally contributed or influenced the rise of African nationalism. It was a movement founded in the New World by Negroes in order to promote black unity and solidarity. This idea was manifested through the holding of conferences with the most important being the sixth Pan-African Conference held in Manchester, England in October 1945 and dominated by Africans like Kwama Kuma, Mo Keneta, Peter Abraham, and Williams. An African movement stimulated African nationalism in that they called the Africans on the doctrine of racial equality and the desire to be liberated from colonial rule. The act Activities of West African students studying abroad, especially the West African Student Union, played an important role in the rise of African nationalism. They condemned colonial rule and promised support to African nationalists in their struggle for independence. Moreover, the discovery or experience of African soldiers abroad during the Second World War only necessitated the rise of African nationalism. During the war, the Africans realized that the Europeans were not different from Africans. They discovered that some of the Europeans were weak, coward, drunkards, prostitutes, instant, poor, and some even abandoned the war. When they returned home, the told story of their experience, which inspired the spirit of nationalism. The psychological impact of the Second World War equally initiated the rise of African nationalism in that the loss of French and British prestige resulting from their disastrous defeats in Europe and the Far East helped to arouse national sentiment. This made the colonial subject doubt the ability of the colonial master to protect them against external attack. 
These were the causes or the factors that provoked the rise of African nationalism in Africa. And these factors are both divided into internal and external factors. Now, we will move in our next class to examine how the Second World War contributed to the rise of African nationalism or how the Second World War had as a turning point or springboard in the rise of nationalism in Africa. I come back to repeat again this dear candidate, dear students of uh, examination classes. If you are looking for a center where to prepare yourself for the upcoming DC, this 2023, you have St. Austin Revision Center situated at Kaofushuvans. St. Austin is not only a, a revision center, it is also a medical institution. For those of you who wish to do in medical field, you can join St. Austin, right? St. Austin is a renowned institution that trains several Cameroonians, not only Cameroonians, but other people out abroad on the medical field. If you are interested to join this institution, both for the extra classes and for the nurse in the coming uh, month, right, you are free to call the above number that you will see on the line here. You are free to call 651 70 455 This lecture was provided to you by Sir Moses, the three teacher of St. Austin.